around 2005, Monsalve decided that it wasn't just enough to actually be bringing young women in for consensual prostitution. He would also move into what we now call forced prostitution, which is sex trafficking. And at that point, his recruiting really redoubled. And he went around, again, all those different 12, 13 different countries, and he would go to restaurants, he would go to bars, he would go to resort towns, and he would say, hey, you know what? I have great work in hotels and in restaurants up in Florida, or up in Mississippi, or up in Louisiana, where you can come work. And at that point, he began recruiting young women who had no idea that what was actually awaiting them was for sex, was the world of sex trafficking. This was a little more sophisticated. They ran it as a delivery business. They realized that it would be much simpler for them and much easier if, in fact, there was not a line of 20 men standing outside a brothel door on a Friday night. So they ran it as a delivery business. As it turns out, Melchor distributed little business cards throughout the Tallahassee community. Actually, he did it all over Florida. We found out later that there were close to 20 brothels that the Colombians were running throughout Florida and that the MO, the modus operandi, was exactly the same in each one of these cases, that it would be a local pimp who was in charge of that particular, almost regional office, if you want to think of it. Tallahassee's regional office, as it turns out, was a safe house. It was about two blocks from the local US attorney where he lived in a gated community, in one of the nicest parts of Tallahassee. Now, a lot of our work at our Human Rights Center, we work a lot with the migrant community. And I've been telling this U.S. attorney for really several years that, great, we've been hearing bits and pieces from the immigrant community about a sex trafficking operation that's going on right here in the capital city. And he would tell me, Terry, Terry, Terry. Now, I know that sex trafficking happens in other places in Florida. And in fact, his actual quote was, Terry, all the shit flows south in Florida. I know that they have those problems in Orlando and Miami and Tampa, but not up here in quiet, conservative Tallahassee. Well, as it turns out, the case, when it broke, involved two young women that were fleeing a safe house where numerous young women had been held over the course of several years. They were being held in this gated neighborhood. They would then be taken out at night by this pimp. And the way the clients found out about the service was interesting. This pimp controlled, actually, the entire operation for North Florida. And he would go to migrant farm worker camps. He would go to Mexican food stores, Mexican restaurants, places where he knew young Hispanic males would be. They were the targeted audience for this sex trafficking scheme. And he distributed little business cards that had only his cell phone number, his nickname, which was Toti, T-O-T-I, and then at times, a silhouette of a naked woman and a taxi. That was it. And any young man in the Hispanic community that got these ultimately learned that if you call this number, you can get a prostitute delivered to you. Now, Toby had certain rules. He would not deliver to just a single client. You had to have four Johns waiting for him. There had to be four clients. Each one would get 15 minutes with the young woman, and therefore there would be an hour of work there. And that Toby would be the personal driver, he would deliver the young woman to that hotel or apartment or trailer where a lot of this happened. And it was a bulk operation. These young women were expected, again, to undergo anywhere from 25 to 40 sex transactions a night. Immense amounts of money were made by this over the course of several years. It was also fairly sophisticated in that it slipped under the radar screen of local law enforcement. It, they were able to get along for so long because it didn't involve a stationary brothel. What is a cedula or carnet in, in Spanish or in Latin America or in Mexico? Anybody? It's a national ID card. Okay, It's what we've resisted getting here in the United States. We don't have national ID cards, and that's a, a constitutional law concern for a lot of people. But in a lot of Latin American countries, they have those. And First of all, their traffickers had those sedulas, those carnets. So they knew exactly where those young women were from. They knew where their families were. As it turns out, almost every single victim that we've worked with is a single mother. What was very curious about this, they've all got young children, anywhere, say, from two years old to maybe eight or nine, which was the one reason that they had all come to the United States. They wanted to give their children a better opportunity. And the thought was that I will go first to the United States, I'll earn some money, and then I will bring my child along afterwards. 
so that, first of all, they had a child at home who depended on them to send money back, but that they also had a child that those traffickers knew where, they, where that child was. This was of tremendous concern to these women, and I think was probably the greatest factor in them not wanting to take part, or at least resisting some of the efforts, telling them, you know, we need you to become victim witnesses. We don't have a case unless you are willing to actually step forward and testify. One of the things that we found, too, is that the traffickers made frequent reference to this, that we know exactly where your family is. We know your, where your little daughter is. If you ever escape, if you ever do anything to turn us in, we will go back and we will kill your daughter. 